Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Tom Mustin with the latest from Denver 7. The federal government made teachers a promise that if they worked hard and made their payments on time, the rest of their student loans would be forgiven. Instead, they're reaching the finish line to find out they never even qualified for the program in the first place. And tonight, a handful have decided they're not going to take it anymore. Here's Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski. Handbells, recorders, xylophones, I love it. For 13 years, Jeffco teacher Danielle Barrett has proudly taught the art of music at Kendrick Lakes Elementary. I feel like my room is where culture happens. Well, at the same time. Look at all these payments. Making our federal student loan payments on time. Every year that I've taught, I've been making my payments. Which she thought qualified her for a Department of Education loan forgiveness program. I couldn't believe it. But turns out her $24,000 loan wasn't forgiven. You send it in and you wait six months to be rejected. Bayard says they told her she had the wrong kind of loan. Even though they were federal loans through the federal government, they were not a specific type of loan. She's now left with 10 more years of payments, no relief and drowning debt. And teachers already are underpaid in Colorado and the cost of living is extremely high and just a little bit of relief would be the least the least they could do. Baird's story isn't unique. Congress created this program more than a decade ago to encourage public service with the promise of loan forgiveness after 10 years of working a government job. Really when you dig deeper it's a scam. One of the biggest teacher unions in the country recently filed suit against the government. They claim the loan forgiveness program is in shambles and are asking the court to make it right. Teachers have been treated poorly for long enough and we've dealt with enough and don't say it if you're not going to do it. Jennifer Kowaleski, Denver 7. The Department of Education tells us it can't comment on pending litigation, but it blames complexities in the program for why few people are eligible for loan forgiveness. Well, if CDOT gets Highway 36 fixed this summer, it'll be a minor miracle. We flew over the road today and saw something more closely resembling a war zone than just a crack in the foundation. Now, CDOT tells us the soil beneath the road settled and shifted and caused the concrete to buckle Friday to the tune of this 60 by 300 foot hole. By the way, it's still shifting tonight, meaning it's unsafe and really pointless to do much heavy construction at the moment. So here's what you need to know if you take this road to work on the weekends. Two eastbound lanes will reopen Wednesday morning on the westbound, westbound side of the bridge. It will still be very slow going. So for now, leave at least a half an hour early. Take the bus if you can, and if at all possible, just avoid the area entirely. Meanwhile, tonight the newly sworn in Denver City Council will be tasked with making a decision that impacts all of the front range. A vote is set for this evening on whether to widen Pena Boulevard. If approved, parts of the road to DIA would widen from six lanes to nine. Other sections would go from three to five. The cost would be about $93 million. Construction would begin in January and hopefully wrap up by spring of 2022. And tonight, Aurora police are going through surveillance footage. They're trying to decide if charges will be filed after Friday's raucous protest at the ICE facility. Specifically, they're focusing on the few people who broke from the largely peaceful crowd, pulled down the American flag, and replaced it with a Mexican flag. Any charges are expected to be misdemeanors. 911 dispatchers do it all. On a daily basis, they guide people through house fires, shooting, shooting, some traffic accidents, and as Denver 7's Jason Grenauer shows us, sometimes they even play doctor. You never know what call is coming in when that phone rings. 911. And when the phone rang last week at Jeffcom 911, dispatcher Lindsay answered. What is going on there? Delivering the baby. Okay. I could hear a lot going on and I just went straight into the pro QA and started asking him the pregnancy questions. How many weeks pregnant is she? The man and his wife, already in labor, were stopped at a gas station, unable to make it to a hospital. Get that ambulance quickly. I need you to keep the baby between the mother's legs and level her with yep. her bottom, okay? That baby was excited to come into the world. Just a few minutes and a few instructions from Lindsay later. It was a girl. So it was pretty exciting, but because the baby was born so fast, the focus was more on, is she breathing? After a few more instructions. Listen carefully and do exactly as I say, okay? And a few anxious seconds. Hooray! Where's the baby cry? Good job, little girl. It was just a relief that, wow, the baby was born, she's crying. She's breathing and the medics are on scene now. They found him okay. About 20,000 calls come into Jeffcom 911 every month. They've only had a handful of childbirth calls. I never thought I'd get one. <laughs> There's a new family out there. 
that's probably happy she did. I'm Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. They do a great job. Now, this has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Tom Mustin.